Hello everyone, welcome to another video of the course. In this video, we are going to calculate the direct and quadrature axis in dike tenses. Yes, the equivalent circuit parameters of the motor. So, here you can see the dynamic equivalent circuits of the PMSM motor neglecting core losses this image is from this reference pmsm and brushless dc motor drives a very good textbook and here you can see the dynamic stator q axis equivalent circuit the axis equivalent circuit and this is the zero sequence equivalent circuit so here we have the rs or the phase resistance and this is the zero sequence inductance l0 actually it is equal to the leakage inductance of one phase and here is the ld lq and we have lambda AF here, or the flux linkage due to magnets. So the aim is to calculate LD and LQ using the finite element method. Calculation of the LD and LQ is a challenging step. We have different methods to calculate the value of LD and LQ. Yes, we can use either magnetostatic solver or transient solver. So we will calculate the value of LD and LQ using these methods and finally we will compare the numbers. Okay, here we have the steady state equivalent circuit of the motor. As you know, in the steady state operation, we don't have these inductances. Yes, because quantities in the rotor reference frame are constant. So we have constant input voltage here and here. So at the steady state operation, the voltage drop over this inductance and this inductance is zero. Here also we have the core resistance RC. This is for modeling of the core losses. We have these two equations lambda d is equal LDID plus lambda m and lambda q is lq iq so using these two equations i can calculate ld and lq but how suppose we set the value of advanced angle equal to zero so in this case only we have deflux right and Q flux is zero. So in this case, we have the current and the total flux linkage in the direction of the D axis is LD ID plus lambda M. So when we increase the level of excitation, yes, we can calculate LD as a function of ID. But here is the question, how we can segregate this term from this term? Do we consider the lambda m a constant value, right? Or do we consider it as a function of a state or current? As you know, when we increase the level of excitation, we have a level of saturation in iron parts so the reluctance factor increases yes 
and the amount of the flux linkage due to magnet decreases. So the segregation of this term and this term is important. Okay, here is the procedure for calculation of direct access inductance using matrix definition in the software and using the calculation of the phase inductance, right, the self-inductances and mutual inductances and finally calculate the LD and LQ. Here we calculate lambda D and lambda Q and using the flux values we calculate LD and LQ. But here directly we calculate inductances and knowing the value of inductances we calculate LD and LQ. So here I have the flux linkage for the phase A, B and C. So we have this matrix equation, for example, LAIA, LAB, IB, LAC, IC plus lambda AM. This is the flux linkage to the phase A due to the magnets. So when we set the value of alpha IS equal to zero, the value of ID is IS and IQ is zero. So we have these values, IA is equal to ID, IB is negative of ID divided by two and IC is negative of ID divided by two. And you know, the lambda AM is equal to the lambda M. What is the reason? You know, we have this situation. When we set the value of advanced angle equal to zero, this is the magnetic axis of phase A, B, and C. And this is the magnet flux, lambda M. And here we have the D axis and also Q axis. So in this case, because the magnetic axis of the phase A is on D axis of the rotor, lambda AM is equal to the lambda M. And lambda BM is equal to negative of 1 divided by 2 lambda m. This angle is 30. So, these values. Here I performed a simulation in the magnetic loading analysis. When you perform the magnetic loading calculation, these are values, magnetic loading analysis and flux linkage to the phase A, B and C. In this case, I don't have any excitation on winding and the magnetic axis of the phase A is on the D axis of the rotor. So as you can see here, these values are half of the flux linkage to the phase A, negative sign, right? Because the direction of this vector is in opposite direction of the magnetic axis of the phase B and C. So the D flux is equal to this expression. And if I replace these equations instead of lambda A, B and C and simplify the expression, finally I have this equation. Lambda D is equal to this expression times 2 divided by 3 times ID plus lambda M. Now compare this equation with this equation. So according to this equation, we can consider this term, right, as D inductance. So if we calculate LA, 
ال بی اند ال سی اند میچوال اینداکتنسز آی کن کالکولیت ال دی وات اف وی اولسو کانسیدر سام سیمپلیفیکیشنز وی کن سیمپلیفای دیس ترم اولسو یو نو اف آی کانسیدر دیس کاندیشنز ال ای از ایکوال تو ال بی ایکوال تو ال سی اند میچوال اینداکتنسز ار ایکوال This is a surface mounted magnet motor so I will have this equation the d inductance is la minus lab times id plus lambda m so here I have two references so let's start with this one You can review this appendix, the DQ0 transformation. This appendix is from this well-known reference, electric machinery. And review the equations for calculation of the LD and LQ. We have a salient pole synchronous machine and transformations so this is the inductance matrix and here we have two assumptions for idealization yes for example the air gap permeans has a constant component and a smaller component that varies Sinusoidally is the rotor angle, right? The frequency is two times the fundamental one. And the effect of space harmonics are neglected. So if we consider the self-inductance equal to a constant value and LAL is the leakage inductance of the phase A and a term that varies with the rotor position. due to saliency. In our case, we don't have rotor saliency. So this is LAA and we have these equations for mutual inductances. So if you perform the transformations, you can review this appendix. Finally, we will have these equations. So here you can see the value of direct axis inductance. That is the LAL, the leakage inductance of the phase A, one phase, plus 3 divided by 2 LAA0 plus LG2. This is equal to LAA minus LAB. Yes, if you perform this subtraction, this one that we have. Similar derivation is presented in this reference. This is also a very good reference. However, it is old, but it's really good to start to learn the sensorless vector and direct torque control. In this chapter, We have the space phasor model of AC machines, so transformations, and similar derivation is presented here. Yes, for calculation of the LS, or actually this is the direct axis inductance. So, we can use this equation or this equation. to calculate the LD. So I will calculate LD using these two equations and compare. Similarly, for calculation of the LQ, I can use this equation. So if I assume alpha is equal to 90 electric degrees, ID is equal to zero and IQ is equal to IS. And we have these values. So If we replace these values here for calculation of the lambda q, we have this equation. So this term 
could be considered as Q inductance. So, here in the software, let's start by magnetic loading 2D for calculation of the LD and LQ. To save the time, I did the settings before. I defined D inductance and Q inductance analysis setups. And here I defined this matrix according to the winding pattern. This is the phase A, phase B, and phase C. And here I defined this optimatrix to calculate the D inductance and Q inductance. So to calculate D inductance, I set the value of advanced angle equal to zero and IS per unit. I change it from the negative 1.2 per unit to 1.2 per unit. So I did the simulation for D inductance, optometric analysis and Q inductance. And here are results. This is the value of Q inductance calculated by this equation. The red one, LQ, is lambda Q divided by IQ. This one. And using inductance expedition. This one. So as you can see here, we have a difference yes so what is the reason you know we should check the procedure for inductance calculation the inductance concept for nonlinear materials is complex as you know we have initial inductance we have incremental inductance and apparent inductance. So here in the help, you can search for the inductance calculation in software. So let's review here. We have different type of inductance in the software for nonlinear materials yes here you can see the image the initial inductance the slope of the tangent line is incremental inductance and the slope of this green line is the apparent inductance so when we set the inductance calculation here inductance computation using the apparent method or incremental Software selects the way to calculate the value of inductance. So, here is the procedure that software calculates the value of inductance. First, a nonlinear magnetostatic solution is generated with all sources at user specified values. This establishes a value of permeability that varies with each mesh element since the degree of saturation varies throughout the device. So the software performs a nonlinear magnetostatic solution first and sets the value of permeabilities for each mesh element. And after that, it performs several linear solutions for inductance matrix calculation considering the value of coil current equal to 1 and the resulting values are apparent inductances. Yes, so this is the procedure. And here you can see the definitions of the incremental and apparent inductance and initial inductance. And here is the procedure for calculation of the inductance using the energy equation. 
and also similarly the energy equation is used for calculation of mutual inductances anyway so when i said the inductance computation to a parent that actually we need the concept of incremental inductance is different at the slope of tangent line and calculate the value of LQ, we have this offset. But here I have permanent magnets. Yes, I have these permanent magnets. What if I set the material of these magnets to vacuum? You know? When I set the material of the magnets to vacuum and rerun the Q inductance calculation, so the result is interesting. When we have magnets, so the software first perform a nonlinear magnetostatic calculation and set the value of permeabilities. So we have a level of saturation. And then it performs the inductance calculation. But here, because I considered these magnets to be vacuum, the situation is different. We don't have that saturation due to magnets. So here, in this case, we can compare the value of Q inductance that we calculate using the equation here and using this equation. So as you can see here, in this case, results are close. Yes, so we don't have that saturation level now. But which one? is correct or more realistic i will calculate the lq using the transient solver also and after calculation of the value of lq using the transient solver we can decide what value here is logical so here you can see the value of inductance LQ calculated by this method and this method. Anyway, let me abort this simulation and change back to the previous case. I need these results. So, I performed similar calculations using the 3D solver. Yes, and I will explain the results here. Here you can see the value of Q inductance calculated by the 3D solver. Yes, the green curve is the value of LQ using this matrix calculation and this is the Q flux divided by IQ. I multiply it by 1000 because I want to have the value in terms of midi Henry. So again, we have a shift here. And yes, the value of LQ is higher in compared with the two-dimensional analysis because in two-dimensional analysis we neglect the effect of end windings but here in the 3d model we consider the effect of end windings and the value of inductance is higher so here i implemented the equation for calculation of the ld this equation Yes, and here you can see the Q inductance and 
دی اینداکتنسیر سو آی چینج دی ولی او آی اس پیر یونیت فروم نگیتیو 1.2 تو 1.2 And as you can see here, the value of Q inductance is symmetric. But the value of D inductance is reducing when we increase the level of the excitation in the positive direction. So what is the reason? When the magnetic axis of the phase A is on the axis of the rotor, we have a level of saturation in iron cores. And when we excite the phase A in similar direction, so we have further saturation and the value of inductance reduces. So the value of Q inductance is symmetric. However, Q inductance is also reducing because of the saturation, but the effect on the D inductance is more and here we have the deflux linkage and q flux linkage also in these two optometric simulations anyway now let's calculate the value of q inductance using the transient solver and compare This is interesting. Here in D axis equivalent circuit, when we set the value of advanced angle equal to 90 electric degrees, as you know, the value of ID is zero and only we have IQ. So the VD will be equal to LQ omega R IQ. So we can calculate the inductance using this equation. Yes, here in the steady state 2D simulation, I considered a simulation with a very fine time step and a fine mesh. So here is the value of electric torque. And here is the flux linkage, A, B, C, in SRF, in RRF, and so on. And here I have the value of LQ calculated by this equation. Yes, VD minus R phase times ID divided by this term. Actually, I used this equivalent circuit to calculate the LQ because I know the value of VD, ID, and I can use the KVL to calculate LQ here. And also I calculated the value of Q inductance using this equation, FLQ divided by IQ, and also the Q inductance using this equation. As you can see here, the average value of the LQ calculated by equivalent circuit is equal to this one, calculated by this equation. And the average value of the Q inductance calculated by the matrix calculation is higher. We have an offset. Also, this is the D inductance. So, This is interesting and actually this equation is more logical, yes, for calculation of the Q inductance because this is based on the equivalent circuit, yes, transformations. But, you know, when we calculate the Q inductance using this equation, we consider all effects right harmonics level of saturation but using this equation we calculate this average value yes so if you want to use this equation you should care about higher harmonics and all nonlinearity 
concepts that we have right to match the calculated number with the average value that we have here so a complex concept and a challenging concept and here i performed a similar simulation using the transient 3d and here we have the electric torque and the q inductance also yes the value of lq calculated by equivalent circuit calculated by this equation and calculated by inductance matrix anyway also here we have this equation in this reference after inductance calculation is for electric torque calculation you know we have this equation for calculation of the electric torque the d flux q current q flux d current and i want to implement this equation and calculate the electric torque using the software and compare with this equation the value of electric torque that we calculate using this equation to check if we are in the right way and our transformations are correct so here in the 3d solver i calculated the electric torque using that equation and also the electric torque that i calculated using the finite element software as you can see here average values are the same and here also the average values are close so this validates the transformations that is important so let's summarize we calculated the value of ld and lq using the inductance matrix and using the equivalent circuits using both magnetostatic solver and transient solver with considering the effect of magnets and without considering the effect of magnets and compare so in the next video i will calculate the performance curves of the motor using the equivalent circuit right to check the value of inductance for the q axis and d axis right that we calculated here so in the excel file in the performance curves worksheet we have this analytic calculation we set the value of ld lq and run to calculate the performance curves we can compare these performance curves with the performance curves that we calculated before using the finite element results right to finally check what value of the q axis inductance and d axis inductance is more logical anyway so yes in this video i wanted to explain the procedure for calculation of the inductances and let's continue analytic performance curve calculation in the next video thanks for watching